Today is Saturday, November 11th, here in the Gold Coast of Queensland, and I hope you're all well. I hope uh, COVID is not making life miserable for you. I um, hope your hearts are not too heavy by the wars going on in the world, and let's put our thoughts and our hearts together to look into some wonderful Buddhist stories, true stories about Teachers, cultivators, as Master Hua would say, people who cultivate the way, particularly Master Empty Cloud, Master Xu and Shang Xu Xiaoyun, who is uh, an important figure in our teaching lineage and somebody who is certainly qualified to be a model for um, wisdom and compassion in the world. So, uh, to get us going today, uh, Phoenix is going to request Dharma from Ohio, and I'm going to ring the bell first. So let me first, uh, Chao Yinqing Sanxia, and we can make three half bows. If you care to join me, please do. Here we go. First bow. Second bow. Third bow. All righty. Uh, Phoenix, if you would like to request Dharma, please go ahead. Gong Ching Da Da Sang Ting Wei Si Fa Hui Ji Chong well, the Sangha with great virtue, out of compassion, for the sake of this assembly and all living beings, please turn the wonderful Dharma wheel to teach us how to leave suffering and assemblies and in birth and death. And quickly realize Namu Tassa <clears throat> Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambu Dasa Namu Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambu Dasa Homage to the Blessed Noble and Perfectly Enlightened One Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Namo sadanto suchedo ye olahudi samyao samputoshe. Namo sadanto suchedo ye olahudi samyao samputoshe. Wu shang shen shen wei miao fa bai qian wan jie nan zao yu. Supreme and wondrous Dharma, subtle and profound, 
rarely is encountered even in billions of eons, but now we see and hear it and accept it reverently, may we truly understand the Buddha's actual meaning. All righty. Uh, thank you, Phoenix, for the Dharma request. We appreciate that. And we are, let's see here. Great. Okay. So, uh, glad to be with you. We're uh, going to be making some announcements today because I'm traveling tomorrow to China for delegation. And uh, people have asked uh, whether that's uh, open to the public, and unfortunately it's not. <laughs> As I probably shouldn't have mentioned it because it's kind of like a tease. People hear, oh, DRBA, Wang Fuchong, is coming to to uh, China. And, of course, people want to get together with us. But we're, unfortunately, uh, this event that we're participating in is uh, invitation only. And the invitations come from the central government. And they're, of course, it's an international event. They're very careful. So... Uh, I will be happy to report how it went, though. And these kind of events are not really uh, for public consumption. There's there are small groups meeting and discussing Dharma and discussing the Sangha, and uh, so it's uh, quite. It's not a Dharma talk. It's not a Kaishi. It's not a Jiangjing. It's not a Fahui. So uh, the fact that we're able to get to China at all is quite a blessing. It's a lot of uh, energy is expended to uh, to get people, Sangha members from all over the world to China. So, but there will be events in the future, and we will certainly let people know uh, when when they're available. Okay, to continue, let us. Click through and say that we respectfully acknowledge the Kumbu Meri people of the Ugambe language region as traditional storytellers and custodians of the land where our monastery is located. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging, and to all First Nations people whose sovereignty was never ceded. Uh, Furthermore, uh, because this lecture series originated in California, I would like to do the same for the Pomo. And the Ohlone, that is to say, the Chochishna Ohlone people practice spiritual connections to the earth and to all creation on their ancestral land for tens of thousands of years. We acknowledge them as traditional custodians and original storytellers of that land, Alameda County currently. We offer our respect to their elders, past, present, and emerging, and to all First Nations people whose sovereignty was never ceded. And here we say slightly differently, Okay, there, we've done our... our appropriate respects and we have a bell song here it is the bell sound wide resounds throughout a hundred million worlds the Buddha's lies heard and spread all throughout the triple world the wondrous sounds that everywhere fill the dharma realm with peace may those who hear it gain the strength to follow in faith the buddha's path 
众生传三千劫内，佛法让万亿国中，共顺其法界和平，利益报他诺后的。Yes, indeed. Alrighty, you're greeted on my screen by a smiling kangaroo looking at you. Welcome to everyone who has joined from Fremont, California. And Dublin, Ohio, our co-host and city of ten thousand Buddhas.、Uh, thank you to our translators here in the Gold Coast. Kevin is doing the hard work today, and we have participants from Stockton, California, Vancouver, B.C., Niagara Falls, Canada. Bart, Nicole, and the family. Bernie and Shingfei down in Sydney. Bill is in Cascade, Colorado, up in the mountains. Brian is in Campbell, California. Hello, Brian. Celeste is back in Hong Kong after a visit to U.S.、Uh, Cliff is here in the Gold Coast. Glad you're here. Hope the kids are listening. Connie is here in Sunnyvale, Duplavan, and Montreal. Edna's in Singapore. Elaine's in Texas. Florence is in Ukiah. Helene is in Oslo, back home from Paris. Hua is in Tracy, Hong. Aquahong is translating in Alameda, and by the way, I should mention, I didn't say this at the start. 如果如果各位愿意听一种流利的普通话的翻译啊，我们今天刚好有义工啊，就在这把我所讲的英语翻译成中国话。你们控制板的右下角 ，click。到那里，你都可以听到 interpretation， 有中文可以听 ，and there is a Vietnamese translation happening as well. Also, if anybody would care to、uh, do the Dharma request yourself,、uh, as you heard today, we'd be happy to let you do that at some future date.、Um, there is a, a a link you can send an email, and we will even set you up if you would like to do one language. And have someone else do the second. Okay, so let's see here. We also have friends listening in from,、uh, let's see here, Lanhai, Zhejiang, Berkeley, Los Altos, City of Ten Thousand Buddhas, Taipei, Switzerland.、Uh, let's see here. Where else? Yukaya, San Rafael, New York City's Chinatown, San Jose, Ohio.、Mm、hmm. Okay, London, UK. All right, welcome to newcomers. Mesa, Arizona. Pinol. Paul is back in Pinol. Peggy is in Calgary. Petra is in Oslo. Let's see here. Hiyo from Dipang. San Jose. Yukaya.、Hmm. All right. Students from Dharma Ram Buddhist University. Cheryl is here. San Diego, Singapore. Rose Mead. Yukaya. Sao Paulo, Brazil. Virginia, USA. Taipei. Okay. Then we switch over to locations in China and welcome. 我们欢迎所有啊，从什么地方？就是浙江海宁、黑龙江、哈尔滨啊，苏州、安徽、苏州、上海市啊，苏州啊，这些安徽、淮南、淮南市、山东、唐山、河北、嗯，河北省、北京啊，浙江、南海、上海、上海。好的，欢迎，欢迎，欢迎。Welcome everybody. Glad you are here. Uh, let's see here. Today's. Let me. I'm going to. Aha!、Uh -huh, that's in the Earth Store Sutra. Okay, great.、Um, I am going to be traveling for the next two weeks, and there won't be lectures for the 18th and the 25th. Just to let folks know, here in Australia and China, that would be the 19th. Let's see, eighteenth and twenty fifth in Asia.、Uh, next Friday, the two Fridays to come in California, and the two Saturdays to come.、Um, there will be Dharma events during the Thanksgiving break. We will resume on December second, and it will be we're going to change times for this lecture. Now.、Um, For those of you in Europe, that presents a challenge 
but our listenership, our audience has become uh, centered more or less, and I guess balanced in uh, mostly in Asia. So China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, Vietnam, as we just heard. And those folks are tuning in uh, currently at 5 a.m., 5.15. Before it was half the year, it's 4 a.m., depending on uh, the daylight savings in America. And the reason, and so we are thinking that we would like to center this lecture series, that is to say the picture biography, center it in Australia so that folks here, we can use this hour lecture full of stories to bring in um, families, particularly young families here in Australia, uh, have a meal, listen to the Dharma, uh, hear a good story or two, and join the meditation class. So our plan is to shift this lecture series to 1230 Queensland time, which puts it at 6.30 p.m. California time. So 6.30 p.m. allows folks to catch the lecture after dinner in California, and that would be 7.30 Colorado time. Um, then listen to Marty's lecture that follows. The, the challenge for that is 6.30 p.m. is 2 a.m. in London, 2.30 in London. And we do apologize to the European folks who, who will have to catch this series on YouTube where they can catch up, unless you want to get up at 2.30, 2 but that's a challenge. The, we're simply... Um, moving it around the globe at the center where most people are listening. So, so apologize to our Norwegian and British friends. Um, we originally began the lecture centered on Poland. That was the plan. And it was Friday noon in California. But that audience uh, got older and got busy and uh, the... the uh, we had some longtime friends from Dublin who never missed, but uh, traveling, their schedules changed as well. So we are now going to appeal to the time preferences of folks in China, Taiwan. For Chinese, Taiwanese listeners, it will be 10.30 a.m. in Hong Kong as well, Vietnam, 10.30 a.m., Malaysia, Singapore. Um, for folks in Australia, it will be 12.30 on Saturday afternoon. So I'm now, it's now here, 7, we began, we began at, uh, am I saying 12.30? Yeah, that's right. We began at, at uh, 7 this morning, which would have been 6, except for daylight savings. So we're going to shift it a half hour so that folks can have a good lunch here, clean up uh, the dining hall, and then come to listen to a live lecture, which will be webcast out. Um, it will be 6.30 California time. It will be 7.30 Rocky Mountain time. Uh, and that will put it um, at 2.30 in the morning for Europe. I apologize to, the, to friends. But I know that the people who join regularly to listen to this series also listen to the other sutra lectures, whereas uh, there are, we don't have any lectures set here for Saturday family time. So we're, this, this lecture series gets uh, an improvement, gets a, a boost here. Uh, 12.30 p.m. Queensland time. Oh my goodness, it is now 1.30, right, okay. Uh, Bernie has just reminded me that Queensland is an outlier in Australia. Queensland voters traditionally vote down daylight savings. So Sydney and Melbourne have a different time than we do. So we will 
let's see, it is now, currently in Queensland, it is now, is it 8.20 or is it 6.20? We are, Queensland doesn't change. So the plan was 12.30 Queensland time, which would be 1.30 Sydney, Melbourne time or anywhere else in Australia, right? Okay, that's the plan. Just to let folks know, and again, we feel for our European, it's currently Queensland 7 is 8 a.m. Sydney, right? right. Okay, We're, we apologize for taking the lecture series to a time that is very painful. We don't expect you to get up at 2.30. Uh, however, we can offer you this lecture series on YouTube if you want to hear the stories and encourage you to continue to join the Abatomsica lectures at uh, Saturday and Sunday nights. Alrighty, here we go. Today we are looking at Master Xu Yun's two, two particular stories that have to do with his service in the monastery. Now, this is pretty special because uh, here's what, here's how the narrative goes. He left home, became a monk, went off to live in seclusion between the years 1859 to 1861, so funny to say 1800s, uh, from t ages 20 to 22, and someone came and told him that that was a dead end, basically. That would be the end of his cultivation. Uh, he found a good and wise advisor, Shan Zhishi, Kalyan Mitra, who said, come back to the monastery. We have Master Miaolian is watching you. Your Ku Xing, your asceticism is admirable, but it's one-sided. You really need to cultivate blessings if you hope to do what the Buddha did and accomplish the way. So, Master Empty Cloud, being uh, kind-hearted and having, he had this nature of service. He loved to work hard for the Dharma, so he did. He was bowing repentances, now he comes back to serve the monastery. And last week, we heard about his work in the gardens. He was the shui uh, tou, he brought water. He was the cai tou, he brought, he paid attention to the vegetables. And he, it's really clear that he enjoyed this because he is an earth, earthy character. Uh, all his life, he traveled and walked and walked and walked from Burma to Tibet, uh, from Putoshan all the way out to, to uh, Western China. And he rebuilt monasteries wherever he went. Master Empty Cloud was a hands-on guy. Uh, we have pictures of him hoeing vegetables at age 118 at Yunjushan and Jenrosu. So his whole life was dedicated to helping things grow. And between the ages of 24 and 27, he cultivated the mind ground like a gardener, like an, he, as he cultivated the physical ground as a gardener. He was a mind ground gardener. Shindi Cai Tao, Shindi Shui Tao, right? So, we learned about that last week. Um, he was providing for the cultivation of others through his own hard work. So, this the lesson that we learned from these stories uh, were, were that he's... Uh, <coughs> able to take instructions when someone gives him a suggestion that he can uh, forward his own cultivation through service to others 
he gets it right away. So look at the title here, Tirelessly Laboring to Raise Vegetables to Offer to the Sangha. And we should note that he was, prior to this, living as a hermit, where his only companions were wearing fur and feathers and scales. So the, the tigers in the mountains really, really were. Uh, and uh, the birds in the trees and the critters on the ground uh, were his companions. And he came back to the monastery, but still was happiest in touch with nature. Gradually uh, getting used to human society again. And mind you, what, did, what was his, he was now just still a young man, 24 years old. And his experience with people had been that when he wanted to do, to follow his mind, his family punished him for it overrode his decisions and tried to pull him back into society. He wanted to live alone. He wanted to cultivate, but he was uh, pursued by members of the family and uh, hassled and harried. So he had to flee society to get away <coughs> from the customs of people who wanted him to get married and, and become an official and all the things that were markers of success in the world, he was not interested in. So now that he's, his wisdom has grown and he's put aside just his own preferences in order to uh, follow wisdom's path, and wisdom says to cultivate, we need both wisdom and blessings. You know, the standard uh, cliche, not a cliche, saying, the epithet, about this is if you cultivate blessings and no wisdom, you're like an elephant wearing a beautiful necklace. Elephants are uh, hard workers and they're the, uh, the wisdom, let's see, how did, did I get it right? Oh shoot, Sherfer would scold me. Okay, if you are, uh, let's do it the traditional way. The traditional way is if you cultivate wisdom and no blessings, you are like an arhat who carries an empty bowl. Remember that one? That sure used to say it a lot. So you, have, you can get enlightened. You can liberate yourself from birth and death, but nobody will make offerings to you because you never open your eyes. You're just there like a lump and they don't know to appreciate you. And so why would they support your lifestyle? The arhat with an empty bowl is the symbol of somebody who cultivates wisdom and no blessings. Somebody who cultivates blessings and no wisdom, and this is a, f a very funny analogy because elephants, as we know now, are profoundly <laughs> wise in their own ways. But the symbol is the elephant with a necklace. That is to say, you've got this beautiful necklace, people make offerings to you, but you're as as the saying goes, dumb as an elephant, I guess. Okay, well, that's perhaps a, an analogy for another time. Anyway, you need both. You don't want to be the arhat with the empty bowl or the elephant with the necklace. You want to be, what, an arhat with a necklace? Is that the way it works? No, no. So here's what he did. Once he was able to handle more society, he moved indoors and served. Look. Zhu fang cong lin qing gui Shang dian guo tang Lie wei yao wu Ru lai yi zhong shi shi Gu zhuo yi chi bo Ru cheng qi shi Wo guo qi hou leng nuan Bu yun Bu yun Gu sheng zhi guo tang chi zai Er you xing tang zhi ku heng dan Che wei zheng fa pu ti xin zhe Zheng er ren zhi Yi qi jie shi fang yuan Okay, the rules of pure eating in the formal style are an important concern of all Buddhist monasteries. When the Tathagata wanted to eat, he put on his robe, took up his bowl, entered the city for alms rounds. 
Since China's climate is different from India's, Sangha members regulate their eating and follow a formal dining procedure. The master adopted the ascetic practice of service as dining hall verger. With his mind set on enlightenment, he served diners as his duty and created affinities with beings in all ten directions. Cool. Look at him. There he is. He's got a rice bowl. <laughs> he is so earnest. He's carrying this rice bowl, and he's dipping rice into the bowl of one of the monks at the tables. So, what's going on here? Depends on the monastery. Certainly once a day, if not more often. Usually twice a day, I think. The Sangha gathers in the dining hall at long tables. And the food is passed around by servers. There's no talking if you're doing it Guotang style. Um, and you signal with your chopsticks uh, that you need more of this or that. And the servers wordlessly give you exactly what you want. That's the way it's done, very orderly. There's chanting so that the monks can repay the kindness with mantras and, and sutras and Buddha's names. And that's how lunch is done. It depends. Getting the food uh, efficiently, quietly, orderly, and happily to the people who want this or that. Uh, the food is, this, this job is done by servers called Xingtang. And it's, Shifu said, Ku Xingdan, meaning it's uh, a rotation duty. Uh, some people really enjoy the opportunity to plant blessings. Other people take it as a burden, and they're unhappy when their name comes up, and they just, you know, do it to get it done, kind of pay their dues. Um, that is to miss the opportunity of planting blessings with planting affinities with beings in all ten directions. Yi qi, qi feng yan. Master Empty Cloud now uh, gets the joke, you say, is, is going along with the program. He understands deeply the truth that to cultivate the way you need both blessings and wisdom. So he is doing it with uh, both hands and feet, right? So he's really into it. He sees the value of this and is putting his heart into serving the assembly. And what is the assembly like? Well, everybody's different. People have different physical types, different blood chemistry, and some people like salty, some people like sweet, some people like sour, some people like hot. Some people can't stand hot and like bland. So the server, if he or she is wise, is able to accommodate all the different flavors. Pu xian da shi tiao zhong wei, guan yin pu sa ren tian chu, wen shu mi le tong ying gong, qing jing da hai. Fan Shi Mang. Great Bodhisattva Samantabhadra mixes the myriad flavors as Guan Yin Bodhisattva runs the celestial kitchen. Manjushri and Maitreya Bodhisattvas together accept offerings, while the sea like assembly of Bodhisattvas enjoy their meal. So, Shrifu's four line verse, just amazing how he gets all these Bodhisattvas' names in there. Pushan, Guan Yin, Wan Shu, Mi Le. Right? And then all the Bodhisattvas get to enjoy their food. What is that about? Well, I will tell you. We have a Dharma friend, good and wise advisor, who was able to connect me with this. Look at this. Oh, my goodness.
starting right here. Samantabhadra Bodhisattva in the monastery was also Xing Tang, same as Empty Cloud. What is the Xing Tang? What is this verger, the server? It's you add food to the bowls of the left home people. When left home people eat food, when it's mealtime, there's somebody who has been assigned the job of adding food to your bowl. Uh, when you're done, you can have more. Pushen Pusa, Samantabhadra Bodhisattva, uh, when he was the server, the verger, Tashanchang Dai Man, Le Soyo Tiao Wei de Dongxi. He arranged like a vest or a belt so that he carried with him all kinds of condiments and spices. <laughs> One bottle, uh, Iga Ping, Iga Ping. There were just many bottles on his belt or in his vest. Dai Li Shan, he carried them on his person. Uh, if you like to eat sweet things, he would add some sugar to your food bowl. If you like to eat sour things, swan, he would uh, he would add some uh, vinegar to your food. She wants your lot. If you're a hot food, if you're peppery palate, gay in lodge out. He would add pepper to your food. So he so he He just carried all these spices on his food vest. Uh, maybe his uniform or coveralls or whatever they were. So, um, he would carry all of these spices on his person. And this living being likes to eat sour, so he gets some vinegar. Uh, now, okay, here it is. So, if somebody likes to eat uh, he would pour out some vinegar. This person would say, hey, I don't want so much. Uh, why are you giving me so much vinegar? This person likes pepper. Uh, he'd be afraid of getting it too hot, so he wouldn't want to eat it. So he'd only give a little bit. And the person who was eating would say, hey, give me some more. Why are you so stingy with the hot pepper? Uh, so... This is called Samantabhadra Bodhisattva fills living beings' wishes, fulfills their wishes. Uh, so he would add or subtract according to your wishes. Uh, Shrivu says, right, it's really hard to be a Bodhisattva. Being a Bodhisattva is a lot of trouble. So, that's Samantha Bhadra, but thank you to our research assistant who knows exactly where these stories are. Um, Samantha Bhadra Bodhisattva did the same. And so here we have Master Empty Cloud uh, filling in the way that Samantha Bhadra Bodhisattva did. And by golly, oops, somebody's unhappy here. The, uh, this matter of eating in the monastery is quite a deal. Um, here are all these monks. They're living alone together. They have given up going to uh, the grocery store to buy what they want to eat. They eat what is offered. And because the monasteries are often on a hillside or a mountainside or tucked into a corner of the city, um, whatever people bring to them in a big bag of rice and uh, a box of bruised vegetables, that's what they eat. They're not able to go to the commissary and, you know, order a pizza. So, uh, so this is this is the reality of life in the monastery, and uh, it's to explain it more clearly, in fact, uh, the matter of eating is a very personal and important thing. When food is not available, people suffer. So to have a place 
if you're a monk or a nun and you know that when you're hungry, you can go to the dining hall and have food put in your bowl, pretty good. So this matter of eating, the monks and nuns don't work for their food. They don't lay the money on the counter or their credit card to buy the food to take to the kitchen and cook. It's provided for them. So the monks say, the monks and nuns, they who practice making offerings, so e bu shirja bi ho chi li yi, ro e la gu shi ho bi de an la. They who practice making offerings will certainly attain their reward. They who take delight in giving will later surely find peace and happiness. So the, the five contemplations are there for the monks and nuns to recite as they receive their food because they didn't work for it. Some, this is somebody else's effort, somebody else's hard-earned money that was offered to support the spiritual lifestyle of the monks and nuns. So you, you're grateful for the food provided for you that you did not actually earn the money to buy, and yet you still eat. So the idea of the field of blessings is very important here. And Master Empty Cloud is making this experience of eating together in a communal dining hall uh, more uh, easy, what do you say, smoother, more um, fluid, uh, preventing the uh, opportunity for conflict, right? So, here we go. From there, look what he did. He went to the dining, to the, the kitchen. So, Master Empty Cloud is taking every opportunity to create blessings. He grows the food. He's serving the food. Now he is going to prepare the food. Let's take a look. 点坐师为僧房大众服务必任劳任愿人汝第一波罗妙智以不可少至群众之口味结长助之金钱供养心印先人后己爱惜物质简视心臣甚因果于毫厘分工过于一念其可呼诸The verger takes the members of the monastery community I'm sorry, the verger serves the members of the monastery community He must undertake hard work and endure complaints he masters the practice of patience under insult and learns to wield subtle prajna wisdom. He knows the flavor preferences of the assembly. He's frugal with the permanently dwelling's money and deeply grasps the value of making offerings, placing others before himself. He cherishes material objects. He checks the leftovers, estimates what needs to be cooked, being attentive to cause and effect in minute detail. How could the master be careless to the merit or demerits of any single thought. Yes. So, continuing the same uh, principles of the story of when he is serving the, mon serving the community in the dining hall, here he is moving across the wall from the dining hall into the kitchen. And here he has an equally important job of preparing the food that tastes good, but more important here is here he's handling raw, raw materials. He has to turn uh, produce from the garden into food on the table. And oh my, I really, really hope, I'm going to put it in the chat box, I really hope that people... Maybe somebody can go out and find this. Look for the, the movie, 
called One Mind, a film by Edward Berger. Uh, One Mind, Ishin, Ishin, there it is. Um, Ted Berger lived at Zhang Ru Si in uh, in Zhejiang, in, in uh, I'm sorry, uh, in on Yunjushan Zhang Ru Si, and the um, the life depicted here in the story of Master Empty Cloud. There's the trailer right there. Okay, thank you for that. Go take a look. You can see uh, exactly what our story about Master Empty Cloud is about. Ted takes his camera right into the fields where the, the entire community, led by the abbot, uh, comes out and plants paddy fields for rice, uh, takes care of tea, plants the vegetables, uh, goes to the back of the toilet and pulls out the night soil as fertilizer. Yes, indeed. And uh, uh, turns, and so it's, it's a real cycle of life there. Uh, you put it in your mouth and then you take it and put it back on the plants. So um, he takes the, he shows the, the, the harvesting of the vegetables, putting them in a wheelbarrow, dumping them into the, onto the floor of the kitchen where they're sorted out, they're carefully, lovingly uh, washed and cleaned and trimmed and then chopped, 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 chopped with the cai dao and then stirred into the wok at high heat and then put on into the serving bowls of the Xingtang monks and delivered to the kitchen, to, to the dining room. And it's amazing to see this whole process um, just the way it was when Master Empty Cloud was there, and I'm sure just the way it was when the Buddha was doing the same. Although, uh, oop, now that I've said that, I, that's not true, because the Buddha went for alms rounds. But you get the point. In the earliest Chinese monasteries, thousands of years ago, the process was the same. They, why? It's a good system. Monks in China, because of the differences in climate, pretty much grow their own food and they don't waste a thing. And so the dian zuo, in Japan, this is called tenzo sama, tenzo in Chinese dian zuo. It is the cook and kitchen manager rolled in one. In Ted Berger's film, you can see the, uh, how the, the chief cook, the manager is also grows the food and also, you know, selects it, trims it, and then uses the, the trimmed waste as fertilizer, doesn't waste a single thing. So it's, uh, here it's go, shen yin guo zhi hao li, uh, fan gong guo yu yi nian, qi ke hu lu, right? He, he uh, how could the master, he is attentive to cause and effect in minute detail. How could the master be careless to the merit or demerits of any single thought? Now, this is when it's going right, of course, because people are involved. There's opportunities for corruption, for bribery, for preferences, for anger, for mistakes in cause and effect. But when it's going right, it's a really wonderful system whereby strangers from all walks of life who are called to the Buddha's Sangha, who were moved by the Bodhi Resolve, come to live together and deal with the basics of keeping your body alive so that they can cultivate together. It's a spiritual community uh, living with a system that has worked for thousands of years. And here it is. This is the infrastructure of the Buddha's Sangha, how it works. And um, it's a model for the rest of society because there's no room for greed here. Everybody's needs are met without greed spoiling the process. So, Shifu says, Tian Chu Miao Gong. 
味清香，产业为食，乐汪洋。伐兮充满周沙界，食衣金行，退密藏。The celestial kitchen's wonderful offerings are tasty and pure. Delighting in the flavor of dhyana, an expansive sea of bliss, the joy of dharma completely fills and encircles sand grains, numbers of worlds. When the meal is over, they walk in meditation and withdraw. Okay, this is a beautiful verse. Shrifu is using the Tian Chu Mia Gong, right? The the praise that we sing, and then also the verse Chan Yue Wei Shi Fa Shi Chong Man. With the bliss of Dhyana as food, we are delighted with the joy. We're filled with the flavor of Dharma. So, such a skillful verse. It's beautifully done. And here in the picture, you can see. Whoa, there it is. Anybody who's worked in a restaurant knows the samadhi you have to get in. To keep all these different dishes just right on your mind, everybody has to work together, and it's high pressure, high heat, and when you do it right, everybody's happy, and nothing is wasted. Beautiful drawing. Highly recommend that folks get to see、uh, Ted Berger's Ishin,、um, Common Folk Films. I believe is what it used to be called. Go out to the website. See. Common folk films. Try that. See if that's、uh, a way to get to see it.、Um, Ted will actually. Ted will be traveling with us to China this time. Happy to say. All right,、um, poem that I wrote about eating. Food is neat. I like to eat, but greed is really common. Overeating pleases me, but only for a moment. Knees on fire, hot desire. Spoil my meditation. Just a touch, too much at lunch, obstructs my cultivation. Not too little, guard the middle. Just don't crave sensation. What a shame, if greed for food kept me from liberation. When my belly is full, my mind for Bodhi is retreating. Food is nice, but what a price I pay for overeating. This was、uh, there. We go. Put that in the chat. Just for fun. Okay. Yeah. Maybe the community library does have a copy of One Mind Ishin.、Um, I struggled with eating and bowing to the Buddhas.、Uh, I I don't want to say for years because to assume that it's behind me is this probably for lifetimes.、Um, other people have different hangups, but Master Hua would come out and say, "Guo Zhen, you're just you're hung up on food. Don't." Too much or too little is not the issue. Just don't think about it. I would think about it in advance and then worry that I overate, and as a result,、uh, would get myself into an unhealthy, skinny state, too too thin, not enough strength. But the problem was not with trying to adjust the quantity. The problem was with thinking about it, false thinking about food, which is a very ordinary, everyday matter. Um, so as a result, if anybody reads the journals that Marty and I wrote on our bowing pilgrimage, you definitely come away with the、uh, feeling that somehow 
Hung Shur is uh, unhealthily obsessed with food. Oh my goodness. Um, Master Hua would use Master Empty Cloud's real example to teach us. He would say, Shu Lao was skinny as a rail. He said, the Master Empty Cloud was really thin. Uh, and his, really, his being really thin powered him to 120 years of life. So clearly, uh, Xin Guang Ti Pang is, is, that's not necessarily, you know, the recipe for long life. But everybody's different. Everybody's different. And then Sherpa would say, you Americans, he would say, you are looking for orange juice at lunch, he said. You're, you're hoping that somebody offers orange juice, grapefruit juice. He said, I didn't see an orange until I was 30 years old, till I went to Hong Kong, you know. So, like, what? So, every culture, every country, every uh, decade or like uh, era, you know, the, the Epicene, the Anthropocene, we all have our different uh, blessings regarding food and climate and physical health and water. And somehow the Buddha's Sangha in the attendant and the, the Xing Tang and the Dian Zuo, this method that comes up in our picture biography is a look into a method that has survived the millennia as a way for men and women um, to eat together just enough, not too much, satisfied taking food as medicine, as fuel in the car, so that cultivation can continue. It's come up with this method that works. And people, of course, you know, we do we eat to live or live to eat? That's a question. Um, we, when you get down to it, food really is medicine. And if we can see it that way and make sure that everybody gets food, if we can reduce our desire for flavor so that everybody else can sustain their livelihood, sustain their life, people can be very happy and food can be a joy, an opportunity for blessings, a time to come together and break bread and all of the wonderful things around food without having to make living beings suffer, without having diseases that come in through the mouth, <laughs> right? So many diseases are caused by what we eat. So this method of eating that that our picture biography shows us is a time-tested, successful model. And in the future, when water becomes as precious as oil is now, and when uh, drought makes vegetables and fruit rare, I think we can hold up this model of communal eating as a way to sustain the lives of living beings uh, without greed and anger, and instead eat with joy, with satisfaction, and with gratitude. So that's what I wanted to say. Alrighty, uh, now to remind everybody, uh, next week, the week after, I will be traveling. We will see each other again in that, okay, so one mind is available through Amazon Prime. There it is. Um, the next class will be December 2nd, and we're going to change our time. So it will be December 1st, Friday, California, December 2nd, Saturday in Asia and Australia, uh, 10.30 a.m. in China, Taiwan, 12.30 p.m. here in Australia, That'll be 1.30 p.m. in Sydney and Melbourne. And uh, folks in Europe will sympathize if you can't get up at 2.30. All me, 2.04.
and we'll look forward to welcoming you to the rest of our sutra lectures during the week. Alrighty. Please be well, everybody. I will come back with stories from China next time I see you all. We're going to dedicate merit. Here we go. Bow in respect to the Venerable Master. We'll see you all in two weeks. Hope you're all well. Bye now.